praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. My text this morning is found in John chapter 16. If you have your Bible, please turn with me. John chapter 16. Amen. And uh, just a heads up, those of you who are feeling so sad, those of you who are feeling, feeling uh, left alone, I would like you to understand indeed that you're not alone, provided that you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, because you have what they call a, a senior, senior partner in life. Amen. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the title of my message this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to read God's word. And please read with me. I'm going to read in New King James Version. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise again? Thank you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll never be getting tired of worshiping and praising Jesus Christ. Because he deserves it. Thank you, Lord. Just here. These things have, in verse 7, I'll just start in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is for your advantage or it is for your benefits or it's expedient that I go away. For if I go, if I go not away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And of sin because they do not believe in me. And of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is already judged. Of course, Satan, the ruler. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take up what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that I will take up mine and declare it to you. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you for giving us, Lord, another comforter. Someone who is always alongside of, uh, of us, Lord, during time of need. This morning, Lord, I thank you for your people, O oh God. I pray that you continue, Lord, to anoint our ears to hear from you. Anoint, Lord, every heart this morning that will be opened for your word. As I speak, I pray, Lord, that you will hide me behind your cross so that your name, Lord, will be magnified in this place. I pray for your anointing. I pray, Lord, that the power from on high, the glory of the Holy Spirit, Lord, will touch the heart and continue, Lord, to speak through your servant in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Some of you uh, know for sure that, of course, the Palmas and the Rodriguez, our pastors, were gone for three weeks. Amen? Three weeks. And I'll be gone, uh, I'll, I'll be preaching today, and then next week, and then the, the following week, I'll be gone also. But I would like us all to pray, amen, as, as a church. I would like you to understand that you'll never be alone, because whenever we gather, amen, whenever God's people gathers, the presence of Jesus Christ we believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. He's no longer, he, he is not in his physical, like, earthly ministry anymore. But indeed, he had risen from the dead. He had glorified King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So I believe that he will be here in this place every time we gather. And wherever a child of God is, he is with you. Amen. Because he has risen. For, aren't you glad? Amen. 
that you are serving, that you are seeing every Sunday, indeed is not on the tomb, but he is alive. Amen. So today as a heads up, I would like you to pray on the, on the weekend of 23rd. June 23rd, we'll have, we have, we will have an evangelist, amen, so I would like you to pray, amen, and I would like you to invite your friends, invite your neighbors, invite your, uh, 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 knock on the doors of all our people, of our, all the members of our congregation, and come to church, amen, because a child of God on Sunday must come to church, must come to the gathering, I'm, I'm not, I'm not speaking about that's just the building, amen, but I'm speaking about the gathering of God's people, those who had been redeemed by the blood, and those who had been touched by the Holy Ghost, must come, amen, and gather with, with God's people, and enjoy the presence of the King. So on the 23rd, that Sunday, we'll have an evangelist who's speaking with us, and I'm, I'm praying even right now that signs and wonders will take place in this place. I mean, because the presence of the king is in this place, or whether, whether the pastor is here, or whether me, I'm here, or whether Pastor Well is in, in here, whether you're not in here on that particular Sunday, what matters indeed is the Holy Spirit. Amen. What matters indeed is the presence of, the, of God. What matters indeed, Jesus Christ is, is in town. Amen. Because you're about to do miracle signs. And so I would like you, brothers and sisters, to pray for the speaker on 23rd. Just a heads up. Amen. Because God will do miracles, signs, and wonders. God will touch you. As soon as he'll speak God's word, hallelujah, there will be, it, it, will, no, it will no longer be the same world in your life. You will, be the same, you will never be the same again. Hallelujah, because when God's word is spoken, the spirit of God moves and hearts will be changed. And your condition when you come in will no longer be the same when you go out. How about that? Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? Hallelujah. Because what we need in this time of of what I call in this, in these last days, indeed, what we need is the presence of God Almighty. As, as Jesus was telling his disciples, I, 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 to give a, uh, I don't have time to give a background, but uh, on this passage, on John chapter 16, just, just a, little, a little summary why Jesus has spoken to his disciples. And if you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, you are also a, 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 a participant or a candidate to receive this word. This word is for you today. Amen. Because God is saying to you, if you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, the time you receive him as Lord and Savior, you are not alone. Amen. How many of you know that you're not, you're not alone in life? There's always somebody in time of need who is alongside of you, ready for help. Amen. When you're sad, he's there. That's the Holy Spirit in the life of a new believer. When you're mad, he's also there. Hallelujah. When your wife is happy, of course, he's also there. Hallelujah. Glory. The about the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It's a, a summary of background. Why, why did Jesus has told this? First, he told them to prepare, prepare them. Why? Because he just simply, he just simply, hey, ahead, when I'm gone, Ahead, the days ahead, the months ahead, the, the, the years ahead, there's going to be a rough time. Amen. Your life will be threatened with, in every area. Hallelujah. What I, that's what I like about Christ. Before you worry, he knows it. 
And before you think of answer, he already is about to give you. Amen. Before the problem comes, God knows already. Before the need comes, before a tragedy comes, God knows already. And he always, the Bible speaks of what I call, I think it's in, 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 in the, the Old Testament. It says, God don't do anything on earth, but he reveals his plan to his servant, the prophets. I mean, that's the kind of God that we're serving. That's why he told his disciples, hey, when I'm gone, I know in your life there is going to be a rough time. Not all bed of roses are waiting for you, but there's going to be a rough time. And when you serve the Lord, do not expect that everything will be okay. But, but there's going to be a rough time. He, he taught them about what he called, hey, when you follow me, you serve me, ahead of time you will be miscommunicated. You will be, you will be, you will be driven out of your synagogues. They will be driven out. They will be, friends will, will avoid them because of their stand for Jesus Christ. Amen. There's going to be persecution ahead. There's going to be a rough time. You know, in life, when you're serving the Lord, you're not excused of problems. Amen. You're, gonna, you're not excused of problem. You're not excused of crisis that comes. Hallelujah. But, <laughs> man, the only, the only difference between a child of God and, and an unbeliever is this. When... When, when, when this, when these bad things comes to you, you know and you know and you know that you're not alone. God is speaking ahead of time to all of us, you're not alone. God the Holy Spirit is saying to you, you're not alone. Hallelujah. When you are in hardship, you're not alone. When you are in problem, you're not alone. When you are, when you are in pain, you're not alone. When you are in headache and heartache and all the body aches and the joint aches, make, make you understand that you're not alone. Amen. Glory. Praise God. How it up, you? It's identified with me as I'm getting older. Praise God. But um, it's my inspiration. Make, make me, make, make, make me, make me always kicking and alive, knowing that indeed I'm not alone. The Holy Spirit, I'm not alone. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I, I've, I've been preaching all of this. These are what I call major doctrines of the Bible. When we're speaking, make, when we're speaking of God the Father, when you're speaking of God, of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and when you're speaking God the Holy Spirit, these are doctrines of the Bible. And I would, I would, I would say to all of us as a new believer, I would like, I, I, we don't want you as, 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 a leader of this congregation, we don't want you to be misinformed. You don't, we don't want you to be ignorant of all the things, especially the major doctrines of the Bible. It's very important because doctrine governs behavior. What you believe is what you're going to say. What you believe, it dictates what you are going to do in life. Amen. And what you believe also dictates how you react when bad things come. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So as a new believer, how many of you receive Christ as Lord and Savior? If you don't receive, I would like at the end of this sermon, I'm going to give you a, an opportunity to receive Christ by prayer. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It says here. Originally, he said it to his disciples. Okay, I don't want to understand. I, I would like you to understand that Christ was speaking to his disciples. But I would love, I would love to encourage all of us. The disciples are gone. <laughs> Amen. And the only person that is left behind is Brother Rudd. I can consider him a, a, a disciple. Provided that he follow Jesus. 
Mary Magdalene and Mary, Mary, Virgin Mary were all gone. And the only person that's left behind is Sister Tess and Sister Tina. So I consider them, you belong, this, this message is for you also, provided that you, you, you receive Christ as Lord and Savior and you, you are following him and obeying him. It says here, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. The promise, one of the, what I call, benefit of the ascension. How many of you had already heard me speaking about the benefit of the ascension? Why is it necessary that Jesus Christ must return to, to the side of the throne of, of, of the kingdom of heaven when he, this is the case? He's, he's about to leave his disciples and go back to where he was before he was born through Virgin Mary. The benefit of the ascension. Two great benefits. God is preparing a place for me in heaven. Amen. Where there are no more COVID. No more, no more, no more mosquito. You don't need to use katul in heaven. <laughs> because he's preparing you a mansion. That's what the Bible says. John 14. Kuya Joe's favorite chapter in the Bible. John 14, 1 to 6. Amen. He can memorize that with closing eyes. Amen. John 14. And of course, one of the benefits of the ascension is it's for your, it says here, it's for your advantage. In King James, it's, it's expedient. It's expediency for a new believer, for a child of God that Jesus Christ must ascend. I think he can, he can just stay here on earth and wait for all the believers all around the world to come to him. But instead, he said, hey, it is for your advantage. Don't you know when, when it's just like, it's just like, can, can I get an example? When our children were still with us, especially our son, they seem to be, I think this, this kid is too different now. You know, when I was a kid, I had to go help my father and mother in the, in, in the farm. And when I come home, we have to do chores. Uh, somebody must wash dishes. Somebody must feed the, the chicken. Somebody must, <laughs> must, 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 uh, must uh, bring water, you know, fetch water. Somebody must, must uh, bring the cow in and the carabao in. But, <laughs> but when our kids were still young, I said to my son, <laughs> I think they don't know that people, they don't know that anymore, amen? Feeding the cow in the field, in the farm, amen? Or, or getting some kamuti top in, in, in the field. I mean, you don't know that anymore because it's no, more, it's, no more, it's no more a language in these last days, amen? So when our kids were young, there is the... the I'm glad that the only the only electronic when they were young in me, early to mid and late 1990s are only Game Boy. So my son has only only you don't know that either, right? That's when you're very young, Game Boy lang, amen. Well, uh, there's no there's no Game Boy and Xbox. That's the only one. And when when they come home, instead of have to do what I call DoorDash. How many of you heard about DoorDash? You know, you DoorDash online on your way home. You can you can you, you can deliver food and make money. That's what my son was saying. 
Oh, why do you need to do that? No, because my son would like to eat. <laughs> if, I can, if I make money in two hours, if I make 50 bucks in two hours, that's, that's Elijah's food for a week. <laughs> Amen. So when that's what happens, it says, it is expedient for you that I go away. But if I go away, there will be someone to take care of you so that you will mature. You will mature in faith. You will mature as a child of God. You will mature to stand in your faith and testify of my resurrection. And that's what I call expediency of the ascension. I will send another comforter. That's the number one point. The number one point, point this morning that I would like us all to understand as a child of God is what I call the person of the Holy Spirit who will be with you. Okay? It says here, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, if I depart, I will send him to you. Uh, I will send him to you. The word help, there, there's a word, important word here, helper. Amen. Three, three similar words that the translators of the Bible or interpreters of the Bible, helper, comforter, and counselor. These are three similar words. Amen. Speaking about your senior partner in life. He can help you in every way, every area of life. He can help you because he's, his title is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a helper. When you're not feeling alone, he's there. Because the word helper or comforter or counselor, the word, they have, they have in Greek word, only one word. It means parakletos. Amen. Parakletos means in English is someone who stays alongside of somebody in time of help. That's the reason. That's the reason a child of God, when you when you are in when you you when you have problem, the Holy Spirit is always there to comfort you. Because that's his job. When you are confused, the Holy Spirit is always there to counsel you. You don't know which way you turn. You don't know which person you turn. You don't know which, which you don't know the plans that you're going to take. Hallelujah, child of God is not alone. The Holy Spirit is there. You don't know the problem. You don't know all the answers of all your questions. But when you are confused and you don't know, the counselor, which is the Holy Spirit, is there. Because you're not alone. Actually, one of the translations, I don't know if it is King J, uh, no, uh, uh, New International Version or some of the, some, some of the translations in the Bible. They translate it as orphans. Amen. It says there, I will not leave you comfortless, or I, I will not leave you orphans. Do you know the word orphans? Amen. Orphans are those children who had no both parents, no father, no mother. And Jesus assured his disciples. Amen. I will not leave you orphans. And he said... One day he he was with his disciples and I think I guess Peter. When Jesus Christ realized that most of of of, of his followers were gone, Amen. When he said, "Rough times are coming," Amen. Hallelujah. When the going gets tough, the going gets rough. And most, of course, most. Most of the disciples, they, they were gone. Amen. 
especially when a three three person came to Jesus one day he said hey I want to follow when they saw the miracles of the multiplying of bread and fishes somebody approached him and said, I want to follow you but Jesus assured him hey the birds has nest to dwell in But the son of man has no, not, not even a stone where he lay his head. Then they make, they start to make a lot of excuses. Amen. Hallelujah. They thought, they thought, they thought Christian life is easy life. They thought that Christian life is all bed of roses. Hallelujah. And they started to make a lot of excuses. One said, hey, I'll just get married. I have to spend honeymoon with my wife. And one person said, hey, my, my, my father died. I have to go, go home and bury him. Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad this morning. I'm not alone. I'm so glad this morning you're not alone. I mean, some of you are, 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 are encountering rough times in life. But I would like you to understand, you are not alone. Because Jesus promised it is for your benefit. That the comforter, if I go away, I will send him unto you. The Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, any, any situation in life. And he said, I will not leave you orphans. And Peter turned to Jesus one day. He said, Lord, we have left everything and followed you. What will be our rewards? And assure, Jesus assured them, he said, those of you who had followed me for the sake of the gospel and left parents and left houses and left brothers and sisters, I assure you, in this life, you will receive a hundred, a hundred fold, hundred fold over. Hallelujah. That's right. When I left home, I, I found a lot of parents, a lot of, found a lot of brothers and sisters who are indeed God-fearing people. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. That's why he said, you are not alone. You're a child of God. Hallelujah. You have another comforter. And he's a good friend. Amen. And I won't leave you. Jesus said in John chapter 14, brother, uh, brother, brother John, can you put John 14? John 14, 16 and 17. I would like you to understand that. This is your comforter. This is your, this is someone who is always alongside of you. The person of the Holy Spirit. All it says there. If you are looking for a trusted friend, in the world, there's no other name. I mean, because when you, when 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 everything goes well, of course you have a lot of friends, but friends don't stay, don't stick forever. But I'm so glad we have this. Can you put? Uh, can you one one more verse uh, back? One more verse back. Okay, fifteen, starting from verse fifteen. One 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 more one one verse back. Says there, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the condition, okay? You love Jesus, keep his commandment, and the rest will be history in your life. Thank you, Lenny. Says there, verse 16. So that's the condition. If you love Jesus, obey his commandments. Those who love Christ, Obey his commandments. Any commandments in God's word. Obey it. And then he said, he will be the one, he said, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you 
another helper. That's that's the word. The same the same Greek word parakletos. Amen. The word parakletos. I will give you someone who is always alongside of you. Amen. It's always alongside. Hallelujah. How many of you in this room has a best friend? If you have a best friend, there's a possibility ahead. Probably a month from now or years from now. There's your best friend now. There's a possibility that he'll be your greatest enemy. But I'm so glad. Your best friend. I mean, I mean physical friend. Amen. There will be possibility. Because, because heart, because feelings changes. Emotion changes. Eyes changes. And of course, face changes. Amen. But I'm so glad he said, I will pray the Father and he'll give you another helper. That means he'll give you another friend. He'll give you another comforter. He'll give you another counselor. He'll give you another paracletus. And he'll always be alongside of you. And the following verse he said, I will... Uh, can you go back there, brother? Thank you. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Thank you, Lord. Christ deserve applause for that promise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He will abide. That means what he called the Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. He'll never forsake you. He'll never desert you. Thank you, Lord. Even when you're mad, he's there. You know why? He's going to convict you. <laughs> when you're sad, he's there. And comfort you. And bring back the joy of the Lord. Bring back what he called the joy of salvation. David prayed one day, he said, in, a, in, in, in Psalms 51, he said, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And he said, Take not the Holy Spirit from me and restore unto me the joy of salvation. That's the Holy Ghost. He'll, I'll give you another helper and he may, that he may abide with you forever. And the following, in verse 7, in it, it says, the, This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Hallelujah. That's the difference between a follower of Christ and a religious person. Hallelujah, they have a, a helper. That's the difference between a child of God and a non-believer. Non-believer might have a lot of money, but there's no joy to enjoy riches in this world. But I'm so glad it says there that the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. The person of the Holy Spirit. Someone who, uh, in these days, a lot of churches, they don't even mention the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Just ignore it. I would like to understand, I would like you to understand without the Holy Ghost, there would be no church of Jesus Christ. There will be gathering of people, but they are, it's just a gathering of people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's a slow five minutes, brother. Thank you. <laughs> I only 15 and a half minutes. You know, Israel, they have, they have seven feasts. Israel, they have they, God. God, God encouraged them to observe those seven feasts. When they observe the seven feasts, everybody will, will go well with them. They are well protected. They are what are called the Feast of the Passover, recognizing indeed the mighty hand of God who delivered them from Egypt into the Promised Land. They are what they call the feast, the, the, the feast of the unleavened bread, recognizing indeed 
without the word that man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the word of, of out of the mouth of God. And there are also the 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 the, the feast of the first fruits, recognizing indeed for forecasting or foretelling that there will the Messiah will come and die on the cross and 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 be buried, but on the third day resurrected, the first fruit of the resurrection, and also the what they call the the day of Pentecost, where the, the every fiftieth they they every, every the day before fiftieth the the year of jubilee, the the, the what they call they celebrate they must celebrate the day of, the day of Pentecost. It's the power of God on earth by the grace of God Almighty. Forecasting about the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church. Thank you. That's why we have the Holy Ghost today. Because Jesus paid once and for all the penalty of sin on that cross. And the, and the Holy Spirit was given unto us. It's not given because you're good. It's not given because you gave a lot of money. But it is given to all of you who receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the, 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 the death of sin, the death. That sin debt has been paid through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. They also must 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 celebrate what about the feast of trumpets, the feast of victory. All of that the blood was provided, and of course they have the the feast of atonement. The only one that there is no blood, they cannot come. If there is no there's no lamb that will, that, that will be offered unto God. They cannot come even close unto God. And of course, the Feast of Tabernacles. The indwelling of the presence of God. Emmanuel, the word Emmanuel, that God, the holy God can come. For forecasting indeed that when the blood is already shed, God, God can come. That's, that's what Emmanuel, God with us, God can come again. Hallelujah, there's a restoration and a reconciliation of God. And the, the people, that is the, 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 the Israelites, they are obliged to celebrate all the seven feasts. But they didn't. They didn't keep it. It will be beneficial unto them. Likewise, also unto us, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. We are now in a period. Hallelujah. In these last days. I don't have time to give to you. If you, if you study the trend of, your, of your, your, your generation, you can study. There are also seven dispensations or the period. Amen. Hallelujah, from, from, from the Garden of Eden unto the Millennial. Thank you, Lord. The seven dispensations, there are seven periods. There's what you call the period of innocence. Adam and Eve were, before the fall, they were innocents. The, the, the dispensation of conscience, when they, when they already fell, they're... they're, they're they they're already two 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 mixed person in in the inner in inner 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 man. That's why sometimes people are nice, sometimes people are bad. Sometimes people are bad, sometimes people are good. Amen. Because of the fall. There's also the period of the human government. And, and, and the fourth one is the, what we call the dispensation of the promise from Abraham to Moses. That's the dispensation of promise. And of course, from Moses, from Moses to Jesus Christ, the dispensation of law. That God gave them divine law or God's law for their lives to be governed and for them to live according to the precepts and according to to the will of God who created them. And of course, the fifth dispensation is what I call the dispensation of grace. That's what we are talking. The reason why I talk a lot about 
Jesus Christ talk a lot about the Holy Spirit because we are now what they call the dispensation of grace. At the same time also they call it dispensation of the Holy Spirit, the period of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That God's people or any, any believer, any, any follower of Christ must understand indeed that without the presence of the person of the Holy Spirit in your life, you cannot live a Christian life. It's hard to live a Christian life without the Holy Spirit. But I'm so glad he said, I'll give you another comforter and he'll abide with you forever. Hallelujah. But sometimes we, oft, we, we often ignore the presence of the Holy Spirit upon us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Another comforter. We are only on the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, how did the Holy Spirit move? How did the Holy Spirit work in the life of a certain person or, or a believer or a child of God? If you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, and how did the Holy Spirit work even to the life of non-believer? Amen. The Holy Spirit always work and move within the finished work of Jesus Christ. The, the reason why he came, you, you come to God, the reason why you are born again, because somebody preached to you Jesus Christ. When you preach that Jesus died on a cross and preach that Jesus buried and Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. It's, it's what we call, it's the function of the Holy Spirit to, to, to touch you. And, and confirm the message. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost moved within the boundaries of the cross of Jesus Christ. Within the blood of Jesus Christ. So that people will come and be brought into the kingdom of God. It's by the grace. Amen. Hallelujah. You were once, you were once a what I call, a, I don't care about. The word of God. But by the grace of God, you have heard the gospel and all of a sudden your emotion changes. Your mindset changes. Your heart changes. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit convicts you. Amen. And it says, it says here, 17, 17, 8. It says, when he has when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Holy Spirit will make, will make us aware. The, the reason why a child of God, like, like the difference between now, you are still the same person. I mean, you are still the same person. You still have emotion. You're still, you, 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 you are still can be hurt. The only difference now, brothers and sisters, when you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, you have the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why when you sin, you realize it right away. Amen. You, you don't ignore, but you always realize. That's the function of the Holy Spirit. He convict the world of sin. The world, the world convict means reprove some of the some of the translators. Convict, reprove, or rebuke, or make you understand its effect or its consequence. Amen. I only have five minutes. I'm going to continue this next week. Thank you, Lord. I still have a lot. That's the only person I spend much of my time talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. How many of you this morning? Thank you, Lord. The reason why when you the, the worship team comes here with all their heart, with all those sacrificial time that they've spent rehearsing, all of this praise and worship team, the reason why there are times in our Sunday services, the reason why most of the time miracles, signs, and wonders come 
during praise and worship team. And it's a different atmosphere. The reason why, do you know why? Because every time we lift up the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will move. Every time we glorify Jesus, even in our songs and worship, the Holy Spirit will make you understand and will touch your soul. And there's what I call, there's, there's a switch connecting from the throne room of God Almighty. Every time you open your mouth to worship, there's what I call, there's, there's a switch, there's a conduit, there's, there's, there's a, a, a wire that is being turned on to the throne room of God, to your heart. The Holy Ghost, turn it on. So that you may, you may experience what I call the very presence of God Almighty in your life. And your life is about to be, is, is about to be changed. Your, your, your condition is about to be changed. That's so why when you come in and full of heaviness, after the, the Spirit of God moves and touches you, you go out delivered. Amen. Because he's the, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is the superintendent of God's work on earth. And the Holy Spirit is the supervisor of your life as a new believer. Thank you, Lord. Can we all stand up? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can I uh, ask uh, the worship team? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. As our worship team comes, those of you, like all, I would like to give an opportunity to all of you this morning. Probably some of you don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. But I'd like you to understand what God's plan is a wonderful plan. And he wants you to come to him. God wants you to come to him. I would like to give you opportunity, those of you, Probably this is my first first decision that I'll make with my mouth open. I'm gonna open my mouth and confess it unto the Lord. The 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 decision that I will make today that I'm going to receive Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. And I'm trusting that the spirit that the Spirit of God, that the Holy Spirit is touching someone this morning. Probably this is the first time you made a decision. That from this day, Lord, I made a decision to receive you as Lord and Savior. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you from this day. So if, you, if you're that person, let's all bow our heads and follow this simple prayer. It's a decision to follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and receive him into your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just follow this simple prayer. Those of you, before we sing, and we're going to sing one more song. Those of you. Brad, this is now the time that I'm going to decide to follow Jesus Christ, and I would like to do so. By prayer this morning. I don't I don't assume or I don't I don't mean that you don't know how to pray but I would like you to lead this prayer of acceptance just simply make it your own personal prayer by following it with all your heart and confessing it Lord confessing it with your mouth believing it with your heart this morning as the scripture had said hallelujah let's bow our heads and follow as I'm going to lead your prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word that indeed you will never want me to be alone. 
but you're going to send the Holy Spirit into my life. That he will be my counselor from this day forward. That he will be my comforter and my helper from this day on. He will be my paracletus as I come to you even at this very moment. Recognizing, Lord, your holiness this morning, I acknowledge that I have sinned against you. And today I want to come to you with all my heart. I want to come to you with an open heart. I invite you into my life, Lord Jesus. And today I have decided to receive you as my Lord and my Savior and the King of my life from this day forward. Wash me with your blood, Lord Jesus, and make me brand new. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit that today he is now my guide and my teacher to inspire me to serve you from this day on in the name of the Lord of hosts, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, brother, sister, sister. Can we sing one song? Glory. Remain standing. Hallelujah. It's a time of dedication. Dedicate your life as we sing this song. Uh, sister, thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. of your people yes God inhabits the praise of his people the glory of your song in the love of the Father we worship in the kingdom of God we find our home the wonder Chains that bind us, the power of your touch releases us to worship. Sing out to God, sing hallelujah with all we are. We will worship you, holy is your name. Your name, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord, yes. God, we thank you for your word. I pray in the name of Jesus that every person, Lord, in this room, will be your Lord to seal your word. Seal it with your blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, continue to make and reveal your glory and us as we depart from this place lord that truly indeed we thank you for the person of the holy spirit that you have given unto us that lord we depart we depart from this place lord with the assurance that we are not alone lord but your spirit will accompany us all the way and be with us be inside us all the way because of the blood of Jesus Christ to you alone we give you the glory to you alone Lord we give you the honor I entrust unto you Lord the remaining of God of this service for your glory in Christ's name amen and amen, amen.